This On Your Own Adventures video is brought to you by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, ensuring the future of elk and other wildlife, and by Caribou Game Bags, makers of the Ultralight Game Bag. Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. Most of you know me as the host of On Your Own Adventures and the host of Fresh Tracks with Randy Newberg. I'm here to show you and teach you a very important piece of information of how to be a successful backcountry hunter. That piece of information is the gutless method. How you get an animal that's on the ground into your backpack and back to camp without that animal spoiling. A lot of you ask me, why is it that we hunt the backcountry? Well, the reason is longer seasons, easier to get tags, the age class of the animals is a lot better, and the hunting pressure is a lot lower. It's because of that, because of this piece of knowledge of this gutless method that we can hunt these backcountry areas effectively. If you're gonna be a public land elk hunter and you wanna be a successful public land elk hunter, what you see here is probably the most important piece of information that you need to know. In this video, you saw my buddy Terry Meyer shoot the deer that we're gonna be demonstrating with in this process. Most often you see us doing this gutless method on elk, but I wanna show you how to do it on a deer because all of you live somewhere near where you can shoot a deer. If this was an elk, I'd almost reverse the order of what you see here. If the animal was laying in a downhill position or maybe under some brush, I might do it in a completely different sequence. There is no right or wrong to the sequence in how you do this. My point is to show you the cuts you need to do, how you do it, and the total process from start to finish. The most common question I get on the website is people asking me, how do you get these animals out of the mountains? So what we decided we're gonna do, I'm gonna break this deer down into manageable pieces, and we're gonna pack him out of here, the half mile or whatever it is to the truck. The first thing you wanna do is you take your knife and you cut all the way down this back. And my first project that I do is I take the back straps out of here. I go to where I'm gonna cape this animal, and then I skin it forward. And then from skinning it forward, I'll take the front quarters off. And then I'll have everything pretty much taken care of from here forward. Then I do the hind quarters. So this is what we call the gutless method. So I've taken it down this far. You're gonna feel that there's a bone right here, the hip bone, the back straps run pretty much to there. Everything behind that is part of the hind quarter. So I'm gonna cape this animal this direction and this direction, and then I'm gonna take these back straps off. So the first thing that you find once you get this hide off is you can rub your hand right down here and you can feel the spine. It's very distinguishable. And the back straps are this chunk of meat that sits above the ribs and off to the left and the right of the spine. So when you're going to take that back strap out of there, the first thing you wanna do, trim away anything that's gonna get in the way, and you take your knife and you just find where the spine is. And I always start from the top and I hold that blade right up against the spine. And you can just continue to follow the spine way up, even the hump of the shoulders, which is much more pronounced on an elk but you follow that way up and you continue to cut. And you cut right on the top of the ribs until you're gonna to get to the point where you, you intersect with your cut that you made down the spine. So right here where I feel this bone, there's a bone right there. I'm gonna cut this back strap right there and it will go right back in here towards the hind quarter up against that bone. And now I've got my back strap ready to come off. And once I get this cut made, you can see it kind of becomes like filleting a fish. And you're trying to stay against the spine, against the bone as much as you can. And what you have here is one of the biggest and best pieces of meat of the entire animal. So this is one big strip of steaks right there. Some of the tenderest meat that you're gonna find on the entire animal. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this deer on his side and I'm going to finish the caping on this side and I'm going to cape out this front shoulder from the hide and then I'm going to cut the front shoulder off. And one of the things you're going to run into when you're trying to pull this hide off this, this front leg is that right about here you're not going to be able to to pull the hide any further. So your taxidermist is just fine if you cut that leg right there along that, that change in the hair color right there where the brown turns to white. It's very pronounced on pretty much any game animal. And he can sew that up and actually he needs it to fit it on the form. So eventually you get to a point where you say, okay, this is all the more hide my taxidermist is going to need, usually around this, this knee joint right here and you can actually just cut it at that point and then when you you'll see in the next step why this is necessary whatever you do don't delay in your process of getting the hide off the off the animal so many people fail to realize that in the fall these animals have their winter coat if an elk lays on his side overnight without you getting it aired out and getting air to the meat that bottom side is going to spoil even with a big deer if you don't get this hide off within short order, it's going to spoil. And if we let our meat spoil, then we've kind of defeated the purpose of why we're out here hunting. So now, you saw that I would made this cut here. Now you're going to see why that is necessary. Because I'm going to push this front leg right through just like that. I'm going to fold it up like that and I'm going to tuck it in there and then I can pull it right out just like that and there we go. So now that quickly I've got this front quarter just about ready to come off. So now you'll see that this deer is laying like this. The, the front shoulder meat comes right off the brisket right here. And you'll see, as I cut like that, this front shoulder, all of the joints that connect it are right in here. And a lot of people say, oh, I gotta bring a saw with me. You don't need a saw to do this with any animal. You don't need a saw for the front shoulders. You don't need a saw for the hind quarters. You'll see when we're done, you don't even need a saw to get the head off. All you do is you just keep cutting along the chest cavity and it loosens everything and in short order right here that quickly you have a front quarter that has been shot but all of the meat from that front quarter is now off now on this side what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this hind quarter off here and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to trim all this trim meat off the ribs and a lot of people will skin the hindquarter first. I prefer to skin the hindquarter after I get it off the carcass. Reason being is there's a lot of rolling around back and forth with that. And if you leave the hide on there, it's just gonna keep the meat that much cleaner. And in most states, you have to retain evidence of sex. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retain these testicles on this hindquarter. And just having a set of antlers with you in most states is not does not constitute evidence of sex. So right here's the pelvic bone. I'm cutting right against that. And as Terry's pulling on it, it's creating enough force to tilt that quarter back that way. And when you get in here, you're gonna get right to the hip socket real quickly. There's a, a tendon right there that I just cut that connects the, the ball joint to the socket. And once you cut that, you've pretty much disassembled this hind quarter. That's the, the one piece that will hold that meat together. And now that I'm through it, all I have to do is continue to fillet off this pelvic bone, just as I am here. And right here on the pelvic bone, there's a little branch of it that some people call a pin bone. And all you got to do is just, you see how it comes out here as a pin? 
now that I'm past that, now you're filleting off the back, almost the top of the pelvic bone. So I'm going to finish this little bit right here on this side and go underneath just like that. And in doing so, I've now pretty much taken every piece of usable meat off this hind quarter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this deer over. I'm going to cut the rest of the way down here. And once I do that, I'll be able to get all of this meat off. I'm going to flop this hind quarter down. I'm going to skin it out. So I'm going to come just like I had continued before, right down the spine, right to the base of the tail. So right here is that hip bone I was telling you about that you bring your back strap right to that bone right there. Now that we've done everything with this piece of meat, you can see I'm able to fillet this off here and get every piece of meat that is there. And usually, if you just tear this past this knuckle right here, there's a spot where you'll be able to cut everything. Leave this tendon attached. It kind of gives you a handle to work with. And you're going to see there's a joint right here. It takes a little practice to figure out where that joint is, but I think I've hit it. And boom. Then you're left with nothing but just tendon and gristle. If you use the natural joints that are rounded, like these knuckles, like those hip joints, you're not gonna have the sharp edges that come with a saw or a hatchet. And most of the people I know who've cut themselves on an animal, cut it on a sharp bone. So we're gonna put this hind quarter with evidence of sex attached in this game bag. Again, a game bag keeps everything clean, keeps it away from insects and now we're to the point where we've got this deer halfway done more than halfway now i'm going to quickly trim, trim away the rib meat that's not damaged from from bullet shot and this side of the deer is going to be done then we're going to flip the deer over i'm going to do the same thing with the front quarter and the hind quarter and the rib meat and the tender lines on that side right under here from this joint to about there is the tender line. And whatever you do, don't, uh, don't forget about that piece. What I'm doing is I'm just separating the tender line from the rest of the stuff in here. Going up and finding where it connects. Right here is where it always connects, right about there. Going in and disconnect it from from the spine, then you've got a big piece of tender line here that's connected right back here, right to, to the pelvic bone, and follows the spine the entire way. So I just carefully, very carefully, follow that piece of meat. And if you just follow the, the muscle itself, pretty easy to see where it is and there it is there's a reason they call it the tender line it's the the loin and it's the tenderest piece of meat on the animal the only thing you're left with after you've taken the neck and the ribs and the whole works is the head and if you get to the very top joint where the skull meets the spine there's a weak spot you cut in there you cut all the meat away all the tendons everything else and when you're in there, you'll feel, if you work your knife around, you'll feel the spot that's the place to be cutting. Then, you set your knife down, and hopefully Terry and I can do this real quick. But, if you, you give that a quick pop, and usually it'll break right where that joint is. And then, you just get your knife in there, cut it out, and keep moving it around in there. And you don't have a sharp edge to worry about from a saw. So once you, once you have that joint broken, then everything else 
will come apart. So you'll see when I was done, all that's left is this little bit of skeleton. We took the back straps off. We took the front quarters off. We took the hind quarters. We came in and got the tenderloins. We trimmed up all the meat off the neck and other places that isn't bloodshot. We caped out the animal. We have the skull. We've got all the meat. We're now ready to start loading packs and get out of here. A lot of you ask me, why is it that we hunt the backcountry? Well, the reason is longer seasons, easier to get tags, the age class of the animals is a lot better, and the hunting pressure is a lot lower. It's because of that, because of this piece of knowledge of this gutless method, that we can hunt these backcountry areas effectively. If you're going to be a public land elk hunter and you want to be a successful public land elk hunter, what you see here is probably the most important piece of information that you need to know. Practice on a deer-sized animal. Practice close to home. So that when you come out west and you shoot your first elk, you already have the knowledge to do this. You know the cuts, you know the system, you know how to get it in your pack and get it back to camp without it spoiling. Well, Terry, that was a fun morning. That was a perfect morning. <laughs> All you really need is a good knife, some good game bags, and a great backpack. And this knowledge and information you just gained from watching this video. I'm Randy Newberg. Thanks for watching.